Welcome to the E-Commerce Alley podcast, where we believe that great brands are built on passionate leadership, smart operations, and of course, powerful uh, marketing. I am your host, Josh Coffey, and today I have a guest of honor with me named Matt Anderson, who has uh, in his own e-commerce business that him and his wife run, but they are also very, very talented in an area that I've never seen someone as talented as they are, and that is in live selling. So if you've never done live selling, if you've been curious about live selling, or you want to just learn what it is and how it works, then you definitely need to listen to this episode because Matt and I are going to dive into that. But with that said, Matt, it's good to have you, man. Oh, thanks, man. I'm really happy to be here. Uh, excited to talk about this. Uh, love e-commerce. Love the idea of so- social selling, something we, we refer to it as using live video um, and really just, yeah, letting everyone know kind of the, the, the power behind it and the capabilities that are at their fingertips if they want to use it. Yeah. So real quick, um, before we get going, like Matt and I met, um, Matt's in our, in the e-commerce alley Facebook group, but Matt and I met, uh, maybe two weeks ago or so. And, and we're on this call just talking about, uh, their brand. And we're talking about how he's doing social selling and they're doing it on a whole new level that we'll, I'm, we'll be diving into today. And as, as we're speaking, all I could think is, wow, I've never seen anyone lay it out like this or do it like this. Um, so I had to have you on Matt, but just to give everyone kind of like a reference, uh, can you explain a little bit about what your guys's brand is just so we kind of all know what it is and, and what you, you For sell? Sure. Uh, so our, our brand a store name is my cot style. Um, that's a made up word or my cot is, um, my wife really kind of her brainchild wanting to, uh, own a women's clothing store. Um, and she wanted to call it my cup of tea. Well, that went from a brick and mortar idea to online and my cup of you know, we, when we began this almost six years ago, both of us were not really experienced with anything digital. We were not super um, versed in social media. So, you know, we're just trying to figure it all out. But mycupoftea.com or, or social handles, all taken. So um, uh, we just made up a word as kind of an acronym, I suppose. But uh, it's still, we wanted to embody, essentially we wanted to embody really what our brand's about. We want a little bit of something for everybody. Uh, we'll get into that. That's one of the wonderful things that we find about live selling is, the inclusive nature of it, just like what we're doing right here. Anybody can be watching and social media doesn't exclude very many people specifically, you know, the audiences that we're trying to target. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it's easy, it's convenient, it's, uh, not ex- exclusive to anybody particularly. So that's really what we like, uh, the idea of what my cut is. It's, it's a little something for everybody and, and, and hope that our brand can, can deliver that to our customers. Yeah. And so like, what do you guys, like what kind of products and collections do you guys sell? Uh, at this point, it, it is really a little bit more diverse than I think anything we ever intended it to be. It began as just women's clothing and accessories. Um, that My wife used to be a buyer for an international large department store and we had moved and she left that job. And we started our family planning and she uh, was kind of missing it. And she actually was working as a consultant for Stitch Fix. And this is a little over six years ago as they were really starting to come on the scene uh, as a player in, in that particular space. And a lot of, I think, of exposure to even their model is what uh, powered us to end up doing what we do. But over time, it has grown um, and really it, it expanded in 2020 when, when COVID came around. Uh, we, we kind of adopted the philosophy of if we can ship it, we can sell it. We still like to serve the same consumer. And, you know, she is a, for, for us particularly, she's a... 30 to 45 year old, semi-professional, well put together woman, generally a mom, even a grandmother, um, uh, generally is employed or or works. And so when we, when we, anything that we do, we really try to think of, uh, of that individual. And, um, we're down in the Houston area. And when the early 2020, when COVID started coming around, um, and things started shutting down, the Houston rodeo was one of the first things to shut down. And there's, um, there's a lot of vendors that come from all over the country to uh, an event of that size and they bring their, their products. A lot of them are artisans, whether it's, uh, candles and soaps, particularly food. And we got plugged into, we had already been doing this for several years at that point. We got plugged into a Facebook group that was 
almost like I forget it was I think it was like Houston rodeo vendors needing to offset their inventory and we kind of that just was the name of the group to, what's that <laughs> That was the name of the group. <laughs> I, it was something like that. I mean, I know it was like it was obviously somebody that just thrown it together. But the whole idea was That's there awesome. had been there was like popcorn makers and beef and, and the people that make beef jerky, and we're just in the area and we just kind of started carrying some of it. We're like, well, let's see what happens. And it actually was beef jerky, and it blew up. And um, I think it was uh, it was a lot of entertainment based, which really is a lot of uh, our style of, of content. But um, we have some we even have some customers that are international. Singapore, by, for example, is a very popular uh, country that has shopped with us over the years. And inside of this whole experience, there was just a couple that they had gotten to know through you know the style of uh, of social selling that we do, and we're connecting them to Texas beef jerky. You know, and there's a little bit of a, uh, you know, an allure to that because Texas has its reputation of having uh, barbecue or, or, you know, the whole country Western vibe. But really what it did was it connected one part of the world to another part of the world at a time when people were actually craving connection because, you know, everyone's starting to get shut in and they were buying it like crazy. And we're sitting here going, well, it's, you know, it's only a few dollars here and there, but this is a cool story and it was cool content. And therefore it kind of, uh, created the, the, the almost momentum of what are they going to show next sort of thing. And so we really kind of got outside of our comfort zone of only selling clothes and allowed us to carry – there was a popcorn company out of Austin we started carrying. And then we started carrying some giftables. And then we really got into like skincare. And it really opened up our eyes to the shopper is way more dynamic than just needing to buy clothes and jewelry or shoes. Um, mm-hmm. She trusts the brand. She trusts us. We're able to represent it on live video and really start to uh, create you know, like an influencer – uh, sort of experience, which is heavily built on trust, except we were the merchant. We were carrying the product and we shipped it as fast as we possibly could. Usually next day shipping is something we've always um, aspired to maintain. And before we knew it, we were running just different types of, of shows. And that's really what we consider our shows. Uh, our, mm-hmm. I mean, our content is we, we, we call them live shows. So while we will integrate um you know different types of products which definitely keeps the interest level of the consumer there were some times we did just skincare or just food and it's been fun uh, we we have to be pragmatic about it because you you're doing your due diligence of wanting to carry a product that one you think the consumer wants but two is going to be reputable we've got a high uh, level of standards we don't carry particularly uh, products that have what we would look as low quality ingredients. And we like to present that to customers, but um, we've had keto friendly items. We've had uh, low sugar candy, you know, these types of things. And, and it just kind of creates conversation. And, and I know that's where a lot of the energy comes from, at least on the mm-hmm. consumer side, because they're seeing immediate response to the questions that maybe they're particularly asking or that they have in their head. And someone else asked, what's the, what's the carb count on that, uh, on that, you know, Rice Krispie Treat. Yeah, we sell that kind of stuff. And, you know, being in Houston, we don't get to sell chocolates between the month of May and October because of temperatures. But um, you know, when Christmas time comes around, we've got a really great chocolate brand that's uh, out of Minnesota that we picked up. <laughs> so mm. um, it, it's still our 90%. I say that roughly is, is clothes and apparel because at the end of the day, that's why she's in our store, but Mm -hmm. consider it uh, for anyone that's watching or yourself. If you're at a grocery store or a Walmart or, you know, even a Nordstrom, what, what sort of little items do they have right at the checkout counter? It's the extra stuff. It's the fun stuff. My kids live in the grocery store because they like asking for a, a Kinder egg that's at the, at the checkout aisle. And it's sort of that same, that same type of dynamic, if you will. Yeah. So like, if you could, um, can you, like, can you break down, uh, just kind of if, for anyone who doesn't know what social selling is like live, like, can you break down kind of what that looks like just so everybody can understand that? Absolutely. Um, I mean, it is live video that's being streamed to a platform of some sort. And w- this all began with Facebook live. And for anybody that remembers Periscope was a, was a, an app that was out there and was even the precursor to Facebook live. We use that 
a little bit. It was it was fun. This was uh, in 2016, uh, and Facebook Live launched. I want to say about May of 2016, and we really didn't start utilizing it until September, October um, of that year. But it's just been using live and building relationships and representing product and being able to answer questions on the spot and having comments to a degree be the the carding function. Um, when we when we really began this. Uh, my wife started this. She wanted to get into clothes. She started making videos. She was doing style videos for friends that lived several hours away and something got shared and that led into, well, I want to buy those shoes. And she's like, well, I don't sell the shoes, but she had been a buyer and it just kind of got the, you know, connecting A to B thing going. And I had a different company that I was running, but I have an engineering background and I love analytics and I'm kind of just looking at this thing happen. And all I could think was women, clothes, internet. Those are three things that are really going to fit well together. (laughs) And um, let's just see what can happen here. But to go back in the day, it would be she would order some clothes or, or, or products. And this just started in a guest bedroom in our house. And it was nothing more than an iPhone and a Facebook page. And we also ran a group trying to figure it out almost which one was better at the time. Um, Mm. and we still run both and, you know, you're a great example of an importance of a group because you truly can build a community there. And that's really what the, what the nucleus of the brand is, is the community, people enjoying being with each other. Maybe they're in the same room. Maybe they're friends that have been separated by hundreds of miles, but they could still watch the same show and technically shop together. And then we're kind of, you know, playing the facilitator. It's kind of like throwing a virtual party, I guess. And, um, we would just use the iPhone, had some decent lighting, and would just hit the live button. But there was no commerce associated to it at that point. And my wife would hold up an item, and we would make a Google Doc, which we required people's email addresses and names to be filled out, which they could just share, and we would pin that in the comments. And I would sit there just being the you know, the, the husband that was really helping his wife do things on a laptop and the computer screen um, with the lives going in the comments. And so she'd hold up a dress, let's say, and it's like, this is a medium. It's these colors, which you can see because it's vivid in that moment. And this is the stretch. And let me try this on for you. Someone would say, well, do you think that this is going to fit this? And so there was a little bit of a, a level of rapport building, but it didn't take long. I think a, a much faster clip than what you would need a website to gain reviews on um, because the social proof was instantly built in just on the sheer fact that there was viewership. But um, once once the trust was established, I think people were very enamored by the idea. And so they she'd hold something up and say, I only have two mediums. And really, we would say the first comments we see. And so it's Jane and, wow. and Betty. Be like, I want that in medium. I want that in small. And I'd be sitting there going you know, with a post-it note and um, the dress would be like writing the name and I put the size and I put it on the item and I put it in a bag and basically put it to the side. Later that night, we would open up the Google Doc. We would go through and eventually we had a virtual assistant watching the shows as well, making a spreadsheet of who's claimed what. So we would compare the VA's spreadsheet with names and claims to the Google Doc to make sure that we had their email address and we would create PayPal invoices and we would send those out uh, on our phone at night. And we were staying up late doing this, but the energy was there. And I'd get up and go to work and it was like, let's do it again. Let's do it again. <laughs> um, and so it was just a lot of fun. Um, and that's, but that's essentially it. It's using live video and communicating. Now there's tech built in. We have a mobile app that our live video directly streams to. So the catalog, which we're now a Shopify site, the catalog is digital. It uploads to, um, that that app platform it also uploads to shopify which has a an integration with facebook at this point so you can take your digital catalog of any size and basically put it into the the commerce system um so for us it's our mobile app and our consumers can watch the live video on their on their hand device and literally just tap on the screen they still comment the the commentary is is very key that that's the community and that's uh, a lot of the reason that people are there um, mm-hmm. asking questions and, and getting the immediate response. And, and that's just awesome because the latency is so low at this point in comparison to five years ago. I mean, you're, you're able to give a response 
way faster than anybody could get on a website and ask a chat box for help. Um, Mm -hmm. and, and, and so that, I mean, that's it. We're still using an iPhone. It's, uh, we still stream through Facebook. It just also, uh, mirror streams into our mobile app, but there's, there's plenty of stores that can use Facebook only and work with Shopify because they have a partnership that came out later in 2020 where, it, you know, if it's one product or a hundred products, you can take that catalog, which is in your ads manager or your, your commerce manager and embed it into a live video. If you go live straight from the creator studio on Facebook and, and there's the products and they, the, the whole interaction can work the exact same way. Um, you can actually even put your lives in the marketplace at this point. Facebook is all in on this. Um, because they, they're, especially with, with, you know, data tracking, and I know this is me going on my tangents, it, data tracking being limited, uh, they would prefer, they're trying to get people to check out directly on Facebook so they can actually track the user behavior. Um, and so, so that's an example of a way to use it. We just have a different uh, tech stack um, with this one particular mobile app, which isn't available uh, in very many places, but we do find that, that that's, that's a direction that consumers are, are wanting to go. They love mobile apps. We can control the, the engagement or the attention a little bit more because um, they're not necessarily scrolling. They're very much in on our platform. And so that, yeah. that pays dividends for us. But we also go live multiple times a day. I mean, our style of, of selling is entertainment driven in, in a lot of ways. And, um, you know, it's almost hard to try to distinguish exactly what type of company we are. Are we an apparel company? Are we a social media marketing company? Are we an entertainment? Are we just a level of a TV show? And I love studying those that have done it before in QVC home shopping networks. They've been doing this for over 40 years. They've just were on television and now they, they have a very similar, uh, um, look to what we do. They have a mobile app that streams. They, they put their content on their platforms and they should, but then of course you can still watch the TV show. No longer do you have to call in and order off your phone. Um, you can just do it online or or by texting in, which is great. But the the overall concept has been there. People loved watching that show in the eighties and hearing someone call in saying that they got that set of cutting knives last month. And in fact, yes, it does cut through a shoe. Um, <laughs> but you know, it's like. It's the instant. It's the instant rapport. A little bit of entertainment in, in QVC. To borrow their term, they consider themselves theatrical retail, and so mm. we're 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 a lot of that. Is is really just trying to provide something that the consumer mm-hmm. does want, and we all know we love entertainment, and attention is the currency. And so when you use a live video, um, you build a relationship, you build a rapport. It's instant gratification from the consumer. Yeah. Questions are answered. And I, I, there's a lot of benefits to it. Yeah. So like when I hear all that, so you guys arbitrage basically the Q, like QVC's model and you were doing this when Facebook for your, your trailblazing. I mean, the, it, it's hilarious. So you're adding the spreadsheets, manually sending PayPal. You guys were hustling. Now yeah. you have your own app. You have your own app, which we've our team has downloaded and looked at. It, it looks amazing. You're going live multiple times a day. I mean, so when I hear all of that, like to me, I'm just like, Whew, that's like, I always look at resource and impact and that I'm like, man, that sounds like a lot of resource to be going live that many times. But like from like a percentage standpoint, like what percentage of your overall revenue is coming from social selling and, and doing that methodology? Uh, our social selling for us makes up 70 to 80% consistently. Okay. Uh, you and I, when okay. we were talking about marketing, one of the reasons that we even have a Shopify site in comparison to where we were before was, um, when, when live video came out, it was almost too easy, and I don't like to say that. Uh, I don't like to say that authoritatively, but if I reflect back on uh, our, our time, like we didn't really know what we were doing, and yet the success was just compounding because we were using a tool that Facebook had made available, and they wanted that push. So uh, the reach was expansive. A share back then was just exponentially beneficial because there wasn't very much competition. So uh, Facebook could quickly see who liked this content, and that's all a live video is. It's it's the equivalent of a picture on Facebook. It's just a post. 
it's just a highly engaging post that Facebook likes to promote because people like that type of content more than a static image anyway. Um, but we were getting shared like crazy and, and our reach was nuts. And so we were growing just by exposure. And I mean, that's really where it came from is like, how the heck do we have people in Singapore watching us? And it wasn't by intention. It was by incident. And so what really happened over several years was organic reach started to diminish and, and everybody here that operates on the social platform knows that. Um, and we really needed to create a, a funnel and, and, you know, have customer acquisition. So we primarily use our Shopify store, which is well done for the forward facing first interaction um, for the most part anyway, like to uh, try to acquire customers on that and then invite them to uh, shop in what in our mind is a better way, mm -hmm. but that's, I mean, it's not going to be for everybody. So we also like having the mobile app, which you can just go on to and shop, or you can shop our live replays on there because when you watch a live show, it's very much like watching TV. This is what mm -hmm. I choose to do with my 30 minutes or my one hour. Um, sometimes you like to watch the replays, which everybody likes to do. Um, and some people just want to scroll uh, images and, and shop a website. And, and that's all great as well. So we like to offer that. And that's the beauty of Shopify is it integrates with everything. So we basically just make that our hub and the other sort of channels that we potentially spin off um, really just kind of reside from that. And um, yeah, so, so that, that's mm. what our live video makes up that significant amount. But we do. We put the resources. But, you know, I don't have a media background to really quantify what level of resources it takes. But it's really always been like two ring lights and an iPhone. It hasn't been mm. some $2,000 4K Sony camera. And we haven't had to mirror it through um, streaming services, um, you know, having laptops or really having someone behind the scenes managing the production. Uh it, the raw, more raw the better high, high internet speed was all, was a challenge initially and in some decent lighting um mm -hmm. but today it, it's really not there uh, i mean that the that sort of a challenge isn't there but we have used our iphone to go live and make sales uh in in just about as m many unique situations as possible at this point, we're able to just even go to markets. We could go remotely if we wanted to and meet up with a, a vendor um, uh, you know, if, to, if that's what we wanted to do and represent their product and have our consumers buy it on the spot or pre-order it. Um, mm -hmm. So that's where I, th I think you know, as far as a, the resources necessary, it's really kind of diminished. Um, mm. even in 2017, once this thing started going, we had this crazy idea that we should, uh, buy an RV and take our, our two-year-old and our four-year-old on an 11 week trip around the Western United States, meeting customers and going live from the most random places we could. And <laughs> hindsight's 2020. I don't know if I would do it again because it was nuts traveling for that long. We had inventory in the back of an yeah. RV. Um, but it, we, we kind of looked at it as like now or never, and we can. And so we went live from a random cornfield in Iowa. We went live in front of Mount Rushmore. We went live from the Pacific ocean in Oregon. And we would just use the backdrop really and be like, here's a dress, here's a skirt, you know, that kind of thing. But people were, people were scrolling social media and it's like, what is going on here? And <laughs> I mean, it was just kind of, we were just trying to use, um, the elements as, it, as levels of engagement to get, to gain attraction. And it worked. I mean, it absolutely worked. Um, I don't necessarily know that I would do it again because you know, it's a little bit of a, um, cost benefit analysis. We probably could actually perform better just from our, our warehouse, our studios. Um, but that's, I mean, put your, put yourself in the, the viewer's shoes it's mm -hmm. what what's going to catch your attention, and it's that, it's that kind of stuff. So um, it's pretty simple to go live, honestly. 
So it, so it almost sounds like it's not as much about like the challenge of the setup and all that. It's more it's almost more uh, the individual doing it. Like because I, I'm sure like hopping on camera, just starting live selling is probably intimidating uh, at first until you get in a groove of that. So it almost sounds like it's more of like an internal barrier to entry versus like a practical like technical setup kind of a deal. That's that's probably very accurate. Um, I think potentially we just had a knack for it, but at the same time, if you put a video of, and honestly, I used to be on the camera just as often because it was it was just kind of like this husband and wife thing, which that, I think there was a lot of confidence in that, of like the husband and wife duo, because um, at that point we were watching, we were first time home buyers, we were watching a lot of HGTV. That's a very common di duo and dynamic to represent to an audience because. I, you know, I, I just think it's very, um, it, it's, it's consumable. So mm -hmm. we're down here in the Houston area. We're about three hours from, uh, Waco, which is where Chip and Joanna Gaines for anyone that's familiar with that couple operates their business. And, and I think there was a little bit of that. We kind of like looked at them was like, look at this husband and wife team, this kind of works. And so, but, um, I think if you were to put maybe our first live in front of us or our first few lives in front of me right now, I might cringe because I'm sure there was some <laughs> awkwardness. And it did. It yeah. took a little bit of uh, uh, of gumption. It was my wife that really started it. But at the same time, she had uh, she would she kind of talk herself up for it. But you're absolutely right that over a period of time, and I don't think it takes that long. That learning curve really plateaus. We've seen that with our employees. It was we try to bring in other ladies to help um, show product more, whether it's um, ages or sizes or just women that want to work at different hours and we love making jobs but we see that everyone's like oh this would be so much fun i want to be a content creator and we usually start them off with well let's just make a fit video do it just by holding yourself almost like a like a try on haul that you'd see an influencer do on instagram and there's a lot of times that um that that applicant will say i can't do it <laughs> like they get in their head um we try to coach through that but um our our um, process of getting a, a show host as comfortable is is slow and steady. Get exposed, know the product. Soon enough, you realize you're just talking to a phone, and yeah, you know, you get used to seeing the comments. But there's no there's no need to to be disingenuous. And I think mm -hmm. that if anybody. Um, gets in their head they start to conceptualize who they need to be for the audience and probably a lot of that's built by the fact that we've grown up watching tv with very well polished actors and whatnot but the consumable content this day is, uh today is is or organic and raw and mm -hmm. unpolished and unfiltered and that's really the the brands that on the on a much larger scale that really are gaining so much notoriety are I think of uh, specifically in, in the niche of women's cons uh, women's apparel, like a Victoria's Secret, getting away from creating this look that they felt like the consumer thought they needed to be and just being real and raw. You know, even like an Abercrombie has really changed the way that they represent themselves. No longer is it, you know, the types of posters that we would have seen when we were in high school going to the mall. It's, it's just real people. And, and that's who we try to be. And I think that's probably why it's worked is we're just mm -hmm. real. We just like to talk. Um, we like to build a relationship by just being who we are. It, it, it's inherent. The, the content's getting created even though we're making the sales. And that's probably the beauty of it when you talk about resources is we still try to do a lot on social media and you know take lifestyle photos or make TikToks that we think are going to be relevant to try to grow an audience or you know like we did years ago going live from random places around the country they're they're the extras that aren't really necessary at the end of the day people shop with who they like and who they trust and there's not much more to building trust and likability than just talking and being who you are and so um yeah, uh, we, we make that recommendation. I've done some live sale training in the past and I would always recommend being consistent. That's a, that's a key element of influence in this style of content or this style of selling is very influence, uh, based, but 
take some time just to share with who you are, especially mm-hmm. if you have that Facebook group and you're trying to build a community. And I don't know that every brand needs that, but I do think that nowadays people love to know who owns the business, who, what, what is their interest? Um, mm-hmm. Why should I follow your page? Why should I like you? I, I just think the days are gone where it's because I put 14 really pretty airbrushed photos on my Instagram. I don't think that's going to gain a like. I think the likes, if they're, a, if they're considered a, a, a currency, they're a little bit harder to be earned. But should you earn it, you're truly gaining a fan. And that fan is signing up to be your supporter. They want you to succeed. So show them all the reasons that they should want you to succeed. And for us, it's a husband and wife working together. It's three children. It's um, that we, we, you know, we did this in a house. And I think that was a lot of attraction was, wow, I'm shopping from real people that are really just selling products out of their house. And so now it's, um, well, we're in a warehouse. Do this with us. Help us grow MyCot together. Hey, let's mm-hmm. let's help this beef jerky vendor that's uh, that got shut down, and um, it's a cool story. And this is why they run their business. And you know, I, I just know that maybe particularly my audience, but I just know that people have emotions and they love to feel connected, either to serving a greater purpose or or being a fan of somebody. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, people people want to see people succeed. I, I, yeah, and I completely agree, even, especially on like the – what I love about the video aspect of live or even even what we're doing right now. You know, This is pre-recorded, um, but it is a form of that. You, you build a rapport so fast when there's like – you hear the person's voice or you see the person especially and you start to build this like relationship with them. So like I'm curious you know, if you were – let's pretend you didn't have the app and you were kind of starting over. Like, what would that process look like to begin? Like, if someone's listening saying, I really want to try this, like, what would that process look like? And what are kind of some of the tools that you would use to get that going? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Great question. Um, if I was starting today, um, I would absolutely use live video um, because I think it's the most – I think it's the type of content that – that really can, can try to penetrate the market the easiest. And we're seeing this, yes, Facebook might have began it, but um, TikTok, I mean, is a great example where there is a live element to it and that, that platform particularly is, is building out very quickly live selling capabilities. Um, but I would, I think I would create a, a, a content strategy and really try to stick to it. But in my opinion, it doesn't matter the brand. It doesn't matter the product. The ultimate goal is to be influential. Whether you're qualified as what you know our, our terminology of an influencer is, I, you know, I don't know, and I don't know that you have to be. But everyone's influential to someone in their own capacity, and so you really have to break down what is it that that builds influence. Um, and, and likability is there. Reciprocity is there. Reciprocity doesn't have to be in the form of a discount. It's what value are you giving? And everybody that's that's in e-commerce and therefore in your group is getting that tossed at them because we all love following gurus or or watching YouTube videos or reading blogs and like in emails that you write. And it's what's your value proposition? What are you giving back? Then the consumer def- definitely wants that. What am I getting for free here? Um, and and so if if you're a if you're a D to C brand like myself, um, it doesn't have to just be discounts it can be entertainment it can be knowledge it can it can just be the experience it can be the community um it can be the relationship and and so um those are the elements that really have to be there but consistency 100 percent because i think so, that well go ahead oh uh, sorry i was gonna uh, sorry to interrupt you there i was what i was gonna say is like so like um what would that consistency of going live look like and uh like what what are some of the tools that you would need in order to like actually like practically make that happen because i'm sitting i'm thinking like okay you go live on facebook but like how like do i have to use spreadsheets to get orders or is there like some kind of a way to to automate that because that sounds like a lot of work yeah, to my knowledge right now, uh, Facebook and Shopify have a have a partnership. So if you're a Shopify store, you can sell your product on Facebook Live by placing your catalog into a live video. 
and it will just uh, mm. it'll register. Um, I think you can register the buzzwords or anybody that's watching either mobile or desktop can actually click on the product to check out directly on Facebook. Should you make that you know, change that setting in your, uh, mm -hmm. your, your commerce, uh, settings or, um, go directly to your website, but they can get directly to the product just through lives. And then the live does live. So even if it's uh, a replay, people can still see the product. Um, so I think that's the simplest way. Now, as far as consistency goes, I think that's really going to come down to your content strategy and potentially your product offering. For us, women's apparel is highly competitive. There's a lot of product out there. Uh, attention is currency, and we're resellers. And so we carry some great brands out there, but we have to do our best job to represent that, th those products and those brands and so just like a television show like a QVC, being on more and being on regularly helps. Um, we have to cycle through our, our inventory at a more rapid rate, but that's because we use product almost in the form of entertainment. We couldn't sell the same pair of shoes, show the same pair of shoes over and over and over unless we were just replenishing that audience over and over and over because once the, the shopper has seen that pair of shoes, they really just want to see next. It's, it's a... a type of window shopping to a degree. And that's why department stores probably change out their window dressings once a week is just to keep the appearance fresh. Um, if I was selling something of like smaller SKUs, uh, I, I definitely think I would use live video maybe in an educational sense or just, mm -hmm. to, hey, I wanted to pop on live. I wanted to answer some questions. I wanted to show you guys this new color of, let's just say it was like men's silicone wedding bands. You know, I, I don't know why I was just, I was shopping for those earlier, but how could someone use a live? Let me go live and show you how we make this or how I buy or how I design. Um, I just wanted to pop on and answer any questions. I wanted to show you guys how these fit um, and, and continuing to really build the rapport just through a relationship. I don't think it all has to be product related, but if that's something you do once a month, maybe be consistent in that and say, look, I do this on the first every single month and I might have to work a little bit harder to get my audience there rather than just going live on Facebook because, again, the algorithm and, and notifications. But it, it, it's going to operate in – a live video is going to operate inside the platform the same way any post does. So if you have a good social media game, I think your live videos are going to hit your audience even at a higher clip. If you don't operate on live on, on a social platform at all and then just all of a sudden go live you're going to see less people but maybe that's where you have an sms list or you have um emails and uh, you you send it out over and over going live going live going live make an event uh you know we do that a lot particularly on facebook is make an event we're going to go live people get notifications you can invite people to events if they rsvp they will get a notification that you're going live and so when it comes down to consistency there if you say you're going to start a live at noon, you start a live at noon, and um, that really helps out. I I talk in analogies a lot, but you know, The Bachelor, for example, is a TV show that our audience watches all the time, or, or my employees watch, and I'm like, they're going to be live Monday at 8 p.m. every single week. But of course, they're going to be live because if they're on at nine, they're going to use viewership. If they change something up, and if they're going to run ads, they're going to they're going to advertise the fact that this show's on, even though you're going to watch. I mean, the Super Bowl, for example, the most watched television uh, event all year long, still runs commercials. It still drives traffic. Mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, I think when you start to think of it in those relative concepts, you you see a lot of the the, the elements that I'm talking about. They are consistent. They're going to be there, and so. It might not, you know, The Bachelor, for example, is on once a week. Super Bowl is on once a year, but it is consistent. Um, so, so you don't have to do it every day. That's what I was going to say. So, but do you you recommend though creating that schedule and saying, hey, like every Wednesday or Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or whatever that is, and just stick into that then? My recommendation probably would be um, okay. specifically for, for anyone that's starting out because I think having it on a schedule is probably going to help you think about what you're going to talk about. Um but at the same time, if you've got that gift or you get comfortable, there is nothing wrong with going live just for the sake of it, just to make content. I don't know how many times um, we've been driving for maybe it's at most 30 minutes and it just pops in your head that says, I should go live just to talk. 
because I'm just a person and they're just a person. And really, I want the relationship to be established so that they choose me whenever the choice comes. And I know that building that relationship, building that likability is going to strengthen the overall end results for a business, period. So we go live when we're driving three hours to Dallas to visit friends and family. Just to talk, how's it going? Kids are screaming in the back, who can relate? Um, wanted to tell you a funny story. What are you guys doing for Cinco de Mayo? And they don't, they don't yield anything at all, but I know the challenge that it's been for us at times to think, well, what do I do on social media? What photo do I put? What, what copy do I put? How do I, how do I make people see this? Do I, I can't do clickbait anymore. All these things. But the, the, the answer in my opinion is just being yourself. And it's never been easier to just be yourself in front of as many people, no matter where they are in the world as it is right now. And that's all there really is to it. Wow. Yeah. And, and like, are you, so are you going live even on like a, like I think Black Friday, Cyber Monday, you know, that that's a massive weekend. Are you really hammering that and going live on those days as well? Uh, absolutely. Um, it's not necessary. You, I mean, you do, that's where you almost get really analytical is, okay. um, what are my customers doing? So for us, if we have enough product we understand that the more that we go live, the more revenue is created. It just goes hand in hand. At the at the at this point, our audience is as as of a size that someone's going to be there, and we can make the sale, even if it's in a, re, a form of a replay. Someone will watch that after the fact, and that's the beauty of you know the post living or our videos being inside of our our mobile app, or if we were to try to put it on a website, for example. Um, but, uh, I mean, there's, there's give and take. I, I don't think it would necessarily behoove us to go live at three in the morning. My audience is not really going to be there. If we grew and grew and grew and grew, then yes, possibly we could. But I think there's probably some risk of overexposure. Um, the, one of the great things about the mobile app is push notifications, you can do them unlimited. You don't pay anything for them. Um, mm -hmm. Just like a, just like a text, everybody that has their notifications on sees it. Uh, what we currently don't have, as far as tech goes, is the ability to only send certain notifications to a certain audience. That will come mm -hmm. for us. We just have to develop it out. But I think it'd be great if we um, could get some data like what a Clavio provides inside of our, our email platform that says this group of emails are opened at two in the morning. So therefore we could segment those people out and send emails to those people at two in the morning. Uh, it would be really awesome to go, uh, to go live at two in the morning. Should we have the personnel for it and only notify the people at two in the morning. But again, if you're using social media, and only going live for some reason you're a night owl or you're on another side of the world and you really sell into the States or vice versa. You could go live on Facebook and mm -hmm. only those people are going to see it because they're on their phones or they're on the platform already. So, you know, you really, you really kind of try to figure out who you're talking to and what are they doing? Um, 10 a.m., not a good time for us. 2 p.m., not a good time for us. These women are busy. Noon isn't bad. We get a lot of lunch breaks. Um, but early morning when people are getting ready, uh, for us, we, we, we really operate on a television sort of bell curve, just consider typical network TV today's show comes on at 7 AM and then prime time starts at 6 PM. There's a little bit of a decent TV around noon for us. Hmm. It, it's a mirror image. And then there's even a statistic that most people, when they're online shopping, they have a second screen open anyway. So I think a lot of people are sitting in front of the television or in front of their computer at work. They've got their phone open and we're heavy mobile first. Um, like 84% mm -hmm. of our viewers are all mobile versus desktop, but that's where prime time. So when we go live, uh, during Super Bowl or during, um, you know, television events, we tend to do really well because she's sitting there with her phone open. Black Friday, mm -hmm. going back to that, we go live because we have to go live. Our customers expect it and we hit it hard as well with as many lives as we want or as, as we can and, and the dividends are there. But 
Black Friday in comparison to like a the the evening of Thanksgiving is not as good because what is she doing right after Thanksgiving meal? Hopefully, mm. kids, husband, mm. whomever else is is cleaning. She's sitting on the couch with a glass of wine and she is buying our stuff. So we launched Black Friday the day before. The next day, over the last couple of years, it was it was absolutely all online, and that's probably where it's a little bit challenging for us to predict the future. But what we've been doing, we've only been doing at this level with a website and a, a mobile app over the last couple of years, which has really been um, predetermined based on people's behaviors uh, operating around COVID. But mm-hmm. my assumption would be in, in upcoming years, she might be at the mall. So I don't necessarily want to launch my best sale at 10 a.m. on Black Friday because she's not sitting on her phone. I would like to get there first, no doubt. I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong camera. Uh, she'd like to get there first, no doubt. But um, I'm probably going to have great success Thanksgiving the day before, maybe that, fr- that Friday evening, Saturday, Sunday, Cyber Monday. Mm-hmm. Um, those those sorts of things, but we also use our our email, our um, ad platforms, um, our, our e commerce site heavily, you know, based on just good standard practices. And and the, that that's a side. Our live shopper is not our website shopper. They really don't interact very much. If that makes so sense. it sounds like as I'm kind of hearing this, so it sounds like if 75 to 80 percent of your revenue is coming from live, then it be, or from social selling and using the live side of things means there is huge lifetime value in doing social selling and really integrating this. And kind of if I'm looking at my notes here and just kind of backtracking, like if someone was to get into this, first of all, it's just a matter of you need to create a schedule. You don't have to have the 4K cameras, the lights and all the crazy, maybe a ring light, but you don't have to have the crazy stuff. You just have to do it, be consistent. So you can integrate your, your you know, Shopify with Facebook and you just have to really grind it out with this. But there, it sounds like there's a lot of lifetime value in doing that. Um, because you're building that rapport, you're building the depth of your with your brand of, of your brand with your customers. I mean, um, and it sounds like it, it's definitely working for Mycot. Like you guys are definitely making waves with that within your customer database. The LTV and the return customer rate is uh, out of uh, out of the norm for e-commerce, um, and we we have the, these metrics now because we're able to use Shopify. But I've been on phone calls with Facebook marketers, and they they don't really they haven't really understood. And this is maybe within the last two years, uh, we start to extrapolate some data such as return customer rate or lifetime value of my live shoppers, and the numbers are so exponentially higher than what they consistently see that they they've thought there's a glitch in the system, um, and and. Yeah, I mean that that is the benefit. Yes, there's mm-hmm. there's work to going live, but we all if you if if I didn't do live, I'd be sitting here thinking, how do I get my emails to be opened? How do I get my um, my social media posts to be seen? And those are or, or my SMS, and those are really my only uh, capabilities of reaching my audience. Um, mm-hmm. And you're a little bit blind, but with the live, I almost can control that. The I know that the more that we are entertaining, and I don't want that to be a word that seems daunting because some people might think, well, I'm not funny or I don't dance or anything. It's not that's not the form of entertainment. Just consider the type of content that you would consume. Um, some of the stuff that has, uh, I mean, I don't know. I <laughs> I feel like I scroll TikTok and I see thousands of people watching people try to bounce ping pong balls into cups. You know, it's like. Somehow that's really entertaining to people, but it's not that out of control. You just don't have to do anything. You're just kind of just doing something, and people like to watch anything. You know, the Truman Show, the movie, was a great uh, expose into truly what people like to do, and they just wanted to watch people be people, and yeah. and that's really all there is to it. So, you know, <laughs> um, but y- yes, um, you know, I don't think you have to be out of control, but – this is a. This is just the, the weird element, and I say weird because it's almost like in a gratifying sense that we don't really feel like we deserve. There are people that have traveled hundreds of miles or thousands of miles, or they've been in the area, but they're from Washington or Hawaii, and they come to see us. Um, we have people from other countries that have sent us gift packages. 
we just sell clothes, Mm -hmm. but we don't just sell clothes. If you know what I mean? Like we have been able to use live video to connect intrinsically without really going above and beyond of just being who we are um, and, and making people feel connected though. Anybody that would be willing to do that, they're customers for life. I have got customers that call just to say hi. And there it's going back. Like not many of my customers have my personal cell phone, but some do because we once traveled the country and we were much smaller and we really focused on that. But like, those are, those are not customers. Those are friends that choose to buy what she wants to buy with her friends and and that's what we all really care about. Anybody that starts a business generally starts with friends and family. I mean, that, those are the people that have your back. And so I just think that using this type of a tool um, and being genuine and being consistent allows you to create that at a faster rate than if you were using email and text. And yes, you can be personable in, in your social posts and, and whatnot, but – um, imagine if I had written out everything that we're talking about today and just posted it in a blog and we put it on your website, it would not relate to the person that's watching this nearly as well. People are going, well, I hope enjoy and get value out of it. And, and mm-hmm. that's just, that's just what, you know, all there is to it. Um, and I would absolutely not recommend scripts have goals, but don't, don't fake your personality. Um, don't try to be someone that you don't think that you are. The truth of the matter is the algorithms are insanely developed. Your audience will find you. You will find your audience. Be who you are. And, and generally, I think that similar people tend to hang out together anyway. Um, and for that reason, us just being who we are and we're, we're very service oriented. We've always cared about customer service. We truly can care about the consumer and we believe in treating others the way that you would want to be treated. We have a very low drama experience. Mm-hmm. Even though we sell women's clothing, you would almost think our return rates are high, which is something I should talk about. Amazon, which obviously it's very easy to shop on and make returns on, they re- they they state that their return uh, rates inside of women's apparel is about 25%. So one in four items comes back to that store. Ours is under 3%. Um And I think there's just a lot of reasons to that. But all of that allows us to keep prices low, which helps the consumer, but it also exponentially increases our profitability. Um, Mm -hmm. So when we're able to demonstrate a product, uh, answer the questions, have the social proof built in, people trust the company, we ship extremely fast, and they're buying based on relationship to a degree, Mm -hmm. they get this product and they don't – get angry about it. Generally it fits because we've done our job, but at the same time, they, 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 they chose to make that purchase because of who they thought they were buying it from. And so it's a little bit more personable, but, um, yeah, yeah, our return customer rate, uh, based on Shopify numbers is over 70%. Um, LTV, I, I, like I couldn't even put a number on it, but, um, yeah, Hmm. we've, we've got some customers that, that shop a lot. Yeah. No, I, mean, I love it. Yeah. And I mean, you guys have the app that's captive. This is awesome, Matt. So, um, I'm where could, if someone's like, Hey, I want to go see how my doing this. Like where, where's the best place to like connect with you and also connect with the brand. If they want to see how you guys are doing it, just kind of get an idea of what sure. this looks like in real life. So we're still heavy Facebook oriented uh, just because of the live capability. Um, I look forward to Instagram and TikTok and any other platform expanding their capability for live selling, but we'll probably just multi-stream at that point. Um, I still believe in Facebook. I think it possesses the largest audience and particularly for our demographic. I think they're they're on that platform. But you can check out our Facebook page and that's my cut. Again, the benefit of a made up word is there's no duplications out there. So M-Y-C-O-T. Um, we have a Facebook group. We have a, a Facebook page. So uh, I would say almost every live video streams to that Facebook page so you can see it. The mobile app, if you really want to see uh, what I believe is the best uh, live selling or live shopping experience, that would be the, the type of, um, of, of you know technology to go and look at, download the app. Um, again, MYCOT, it'll come up. And, and so you can really kind of see all the, the bells and whistles that are, that are on that mobile app. Um, 
those are probably the best places to follow us. Obviously, Instagram, TikTok, you'll, you'll be able to find us just as easily. But I'm on LinkedIn, Facebook, or MyCot's on LinkedIn, but not overly using it. We're really our, our direct to consumer. And so we highly engage on the social platforms. Cool, cool. Well, hey, Matt, man, thank you for coming on. Thanks for talking about this. Um, I appreciate it. Everyone, yeah, go check them out. I mean, the app is super, super cool. Um, but we want to say thank you to everybody that listened in. Matt, wealth of knowledge on the social and live selling. They're doing it like no one I have seen do it. So everybody listening, you, my friend, have been listening to the E-Commerce Alley podcast produced by the legendary Dylan Counts. And Matt and I want to say thank you for being here with us. Thank you for uh, listening in or thank you for watching in uh, on YouTube. If you haven't joined the e-commerce Alley Facebook group, it's free. Go do that at dallypodcast.com slash group. And we'll see you in the next episode.